Hey guys, in this video, I will show you how you can create this image. You can find the images that I used in the description of the video. Before I get into this video, make sure to check out my new website. I created courses to learn Photoshop. These courses are really slow and in detailed because the videos on YouTube are sometimes quite, quite quick. So make sure to check those out. I will leave uh, discount code in the description of the video so you can get a discount on my courses. All right, welcome back to another great video. It's been a while since I created one. I needed to create my courses. It took a while, so now I'm back with another video. So I'm gonna create a new file in Photoshop. And as always, I like to use my favorite size four by five. Let's create this. And I have these images from this striped hyena here this will be really nice to have here and i have this lion and i need to get rid of this let's first get rid of this little cup here because i don't want to use that one i want to have the striped hyena so i'm just gonna do it quickly like this so first before i start even editing this i want to place them in my composite to see how this looks so maybe if we place this line here and let's rotate him so transform him so you're swatching that way i think this looks better now let's just quickly move this one to there so if i'm going to quick i recommend watching my courses because they are really slow and in detailed and for youtube videos i'm just gonna work like i always do just just normal speed okay so something like this maybe I think the hyena should be a bit smaller. Now this looks, maybe this looks like a, like a good composite, but I like to make the emotions in the image more visible. So I want to see them faces better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really make this bigger. So I don't want to see the back of this, of this line. I don't need it. I just want to see their faces, maybe like this. And now you can see we can fill this whole area up. So if we made this really small, we have a lot of space left and it would be filled with probably some landscape or something, but I would like to have the focus on these animals. So I can maybe even make this bigger and this way we can really see the faces now. So this is what I like to do. I like to work on close-up shots. And if I get images like this, I just make them bigger and I just cut the other part off. I don't need that. I wanna see the faces. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these backgrounds. These are white background images, so that's really easy to remove that, but I'm not gonna record it. If you want to see how I do that, I will link that video up on the screen. So the background is gone at this point, as you can see. And I always check the background if it works on a black background and white, just in case. So you might want to add a color here, a color fill, and when you remove the background, just try to see how it looks on different backgrounds. So this is fine. For the background itself, I will probably use a something in a rocky mountain or something or in a cave, a bit darkish thing. Now, we don't need this one right now. And let's make the background dark here first. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna make sure that my light will come from somewhere here. I wanna have the lighting coming from that side. So this is just a reference. And first of all, let's blend this a bit better together. So this hyena, I'm gonna give some contrast. So with contrast, I can make it fit this line better. So let's first give it a bit more contrast so it looks like they are in the same image. Now, I also want to add a color balance to make sure the colors are pretty much the same. So I think a bit more yellowish to this maybe some red not much just slightly adding these let's see the contrast maybe a bit less and this is just little things that i like to do to blend this better together so this is the lighting will be somewhere there and now we have to work on the lighting itself so we can also start with shadows but let's first do the lighting so let's make the background a bit gray so you can see this better so first of all, as always, I add some curves to this. So with the curves, I can chop the highlights here and make it a bit darker. 
And let's do the same for the hyena. I'm just gonna add some curves to this hyena. Dropping the highlights here. And we got some dark areas. Now, of course, we need to make areas lighter. So first of all, let's see. Let's make the brush here white or black, sorry. And I'm just gonna slightly make one area light. This will be the first one. And let's also do it for the line here. And like that. Let's see, this face will be probably light because we have lighting coming from there. And this part here. Also his, his paw here, it's gonna get some lighting. Probably this one also. And let's do the same for the hyena here. Just some lighting coming on its face. Don't wanna make faces dark because when you make faces dark, you are losing everything. All the important stuff is in the face. Okay, so this is just like a sketch of lighting before I make this better. Let's see, just a bit more here. And this one also a bit more here. Maybe a bit more on the top here. Like that. Don't make it too dark because when it's too dark, you won't see anything anymore. So I always like to make one part dark, one light. Okay, I think this is enough for the curves end. I can move on to doing some oh, doing some other brushing. Maybe also this part here. I think this looks pretty cool. Only on one side, like that. All right, let's move on. What I want to do now is I want to lighten up some areas. So let's start with the line here to create a new layer. And with this layer, I'm going to create highlights. So if I'm creating a 50% gray layer here, I can just easily use the touch tool to brush some highlights. So I'm going to make the brush a bit small here. And what I'm doing now is I'm simply brushing the top part of this line. So we get this for a bit more lighter on this side. Probably also there, because remember we have lighting coming from, from that side. So we need to make sure this side is a bit lighter than the other side. Let's also do here. You can see here this has a little bit of a sort of rim light from the original photo. So that's easy. We already have that in our photo. Now let's see, maybe a bit more there. And also a bit more in its eye. So you can see this eye better. Now maybe also here. And I wanna, don't want to do it too much because it's going to get really light and we still have a kind of a dark scene here. So we need to make sure it doesn't get too light. Maybe also his mane here. Let's do this one here and let's see how this looks. I think this is already a bit too much. So I'm going to drop the exposure here. You don't want to make it too light. I think this is fine. Now, the next one is the hyena. I think the hyena is a bit dark, so I'm gonna go into the curves here. And let's see, maybe give it a bit more contrast like that. So we have a bit more the same kind of contrast as this line. So let's do the same for the hyena. This was just a test, I don't need that one. And I'm gonna do the same. So creating a 50% gray layer here and just change it on black mode to overlay. Then simply just use the touch tool to lighten up some areas. And let's see here, maybe a bit there. Let's do there. This pile here at the end will probably also get some lighting, so I need to correct that. So I'm just gonna go into the curves here again and make this part a bit lighter. All right, that's way too light. I need to correct that also and maybe a bit here, just like that. And you can see now, once you get these highlights popping out, the image gets really interesting to look at. Let's see, maybe also his ear here, this one. And this one is way too light, so I think that's that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mask here. And with a black brush, I can just correct this. So I want to make it a bit less white. So I'm just going to drop the opacity here. and Just brush it like that. Maybe also here. All right, let's do some more brushing here. So 
we have the highlights now and let's do a bit more highlights so using the dutch tool here again to make sure we can see like more of these body parts like this power is going like that way and maybe a bit here and this power here so we can see this better and let's also do his face a bit lighter especially the eyes because we have these dark eyes you can really get lost in them all right so this is our curves let me see if i can correct this a bit maybe even a bit darker like that now the next thing i would like to do is i'm gonna do more brushing so i'm gonna create a 50 percent gray layer again and this time i'm gonna use the burn tool so the burn tool we are making areas darker and this is just how you feel like you want to do it's more like i don't know painting so there is no really idea behind this but sometimes you i just like to paint some areas darker and you feel like it looks a bit better so especially here on these dark parts here on this side here because we don't have lighting there the lighting is coming from the top side so let's see and you can see the difference here and then i'm gonna move to midtones and drop the exposure a bit let's see let's do this side really dark here and i think this is already enough maybe also here a bit i feel like the side of his face can be a bit darker just like that and now i'm gonna drop the opacity because this is way too much and that's already enough i don't have to do this much and now let's do the same for the hyena just making a 50% gray layer here and 50% gray overlay and just simply brushing with the burn tool. So start off with the highlights and then work your way down to midtones and shadows. So especially these parts here. So we get a bit more depth in this image when you do this. So there. I think there is a little mistake here that I need to correct, but let me do this after this one. And I think this is already fine, maybe a bit there. Now let's drop it to midtones and then drop the exposure. All right, they are really brushed a lot now, as you can see. So it doesn't look any more like the original one. It looks way too brushed now, so we need to drop the it's opacity of these brushed layers because I still want to have this a bit more realistic and not too much edited. So let's see, this one was the highlights and the curves. This one I need to correct here. So I'm going to zoom in here and brush this away like that. All right, so this is fine now for for the brushing. We can always adjust these layers later on when we have our background. All right, so the next thing that needs to be done here is to create some shadows. So to create shadows, let's make the background a bit lighter so we can see this better, like that. And for the shadows, I'm just creating a new layer and let's just use black for now. And let's move the opacity to 20 and flow also to 20 and I have just a soft round channel brush now let's first make one stripe so we have the lighting coming from there so the shadow will go that way let me make this a bit darker because I'm pretty sure our background will be a bit darker and let's see first I'm gonna make let's first make the part where it touches the floor so I'm gonna make a new layer here and I'm simply gonna increase the hardness a bit here and I'm just gonna make this little line. You probably won't even notice this in, in the end, but just to make sure it's like correct, right? So of course, if you have a lighter background, you will see it, but I'm gonna make the background not light, at least I think at this point. So I'm really having a hard time here to create the straight line here with the mouse but i think it's fine all right let's 
let's do the line first and after that the hyena and also for this part just a dark line underneath the bow is where it touches the floor and this little thing instantly makes it look a lot better now let's bring this back to 20 again 2020 we can even make the brush a bit like this so let's see so it goes that way and make sure to bring the hardness down again and now I can make some lines I'm gonna drop the opacity flow even lower because I feel like I see it too much here now I'm gonna make like shadows so lighting from that side shadow on the other side makes sense right so this one also here let's make it a bit smaller here and let's see that's why I uh, like to use a low opacity because if it's too much it just looks nasty and if you're dropping the opacity and flow like really low around 15 you can brush a couple of times and you can slightly adjust it so instead of making it all at once just brush it by hand like this looks a bit like he's floating above it so we'll fix that after this so first I want to make sure I have this shadow and then I'm just gonna correct it a bit so this is our first shadow let's make it bigger and it also needs to go a bit that way like two ways and this way also here like that now to correct this I'm gonna make a mask here and I'm gonna bring the opacity and flow back to a hundred and let's make the brush normal again like that and I need to get rid of some parts so the front make sure the brush is black and not white if you're using masks and the front let's get rid of it because we don't have shadow on the front we are coming lights coming from that side right so that way now let's give it like that and now it looks a lot better I think make the brush bigger and give it a bit of a gradient like that let's see maybe also a bit less here there all right this is fine now what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna drop the opacity because I feel like it's too dark and this will make it better remember this is on a gray background so it doesn't have to look super super correct now because once you have a background you might even won't see it if you have a dark background like really dark you can see this you don't even see the shadow so I think this is fine I can always correct it later so let me put this in the line folder and let's do the same for the hyena so let's create a new layer underneath the hyena and let's do some shadows so first of all make sure it's black and let's also do the the first line under its paw with a bit of a hardness here so that's the first one make the brush smaller and let's see let's do a line there so we have list like this little bit of a dark spot underneath its paws you can see here I didn't cut out the image pretty good here so you can see through it but whatever I don't care you won't notice it at the end this one and let's see where is this last one here and this one this transparency in this power that is because I did the select a mask and it accidentally removed a bit from its power but it's fine all right so we have this black area underneath it now let's make a new layer and now we can brush the shadows so bring the hardness down again let's say let's do 15 instead of 20 50 by 15 and let's see the hardness zero and let's stretch the brush a bit like that and now we can brush some shadows so let's see maybe maybe rotate it like that a bit more like that all right so this will be shadow from this bar like that and like this one 
and zoom out a bit to see how that looks from a distance. From close up, it looks horrible. From distance, it looks a lot better, if you, as you can see. So don't worry about your shadows if they look not so good because it takes a while to make them look good. I'm gonna create a new layer and now I'm gonna make a big shadow from his body. So this is more like from everything and those are from his paws. Let's see, maybe a bit darker here. And actually we have this to do the same for the line. So let me do that directly now. The line is standing here. So this area will be a bit darker here. Like that. And it's always good to use different layers here because you can always adjust these layers or get rid of them if you don't like them. So I like to use everything on a different layer. It gives you more control of the whole image. Now let's see, a bit like that, there. All right, it's not the best shadow, but I don't care because I am using a dark background, remember? Let's do a bit more here. All right, now let's brush a bit away again, making a mask. Let's bring this back and let's drop this to a hundred and get rid of those and those. And let's see, maybe like that. All right, this is fine. Now I just need to drop the opacity here. And this was his body. This is way too dark, so this also needs to be dropped like that. All right, next step is to add a background. Right now we need to work on the floor, the ground here and the background. So for the floor and background, I'm gonna go to textures.com here. And if I'm going to library here, and for instance, search for ground, I can get all these textures for a ground. So this is a really cool site to just download some textures and create some grounds. So maybe like this one or these, there is a lot of choices here. So I already downloaded one of these. It's just the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import that image in this file. So it's this image here. It has this sort of ground kind of texture. And the only thing I need to do is put it in perspective. So let me stretch it like that, make it bigger, just like that. So it fits this image like that. And maybe bigger. So this is fine and maybe a bit more, oh, a bit more to the back. The quality will be a bit ruined of this texture by doing this, but I don't think it matters because it's gonna be pretty dark on the ground. All right, so this is fine. Now I need to make sure the background is faded away. So I'm gonna create a mask and just put a gradient in the background and this will solve this issue. And you can see it already it looks pretty good. Now let's see, why is this thing all there? Need to make this a bit bigger. I think I moved the, the starting point somewhere. All right, so this is the ground. The ground is, I think it's a bit too light. So I'm just gonna correct it now with adding some curves and maybe give it a bit more contrast like that. Let's see, just a bit like that. And I can see, we can barely see our shadows that we created. Where are the shadows? So I need to make sure the shadows are still visible. And I'm gonna increase the opacity of these shadows because this background is, the floor is already pretty gray like our image. So we need to increase that one. So what I'm doing now is I'm just duplicating these layers because at 100% you don't see them too well. So if I'm just pressing Ctrl J to duplicate them, I can see them again and this solves the issue. Now let's increase that one. This one is a bit too dark, so I'm gonna remove this one. All right, this is fine for now. We need to make the floor a bit darker. So let me just work on the floor a bit here. Let's first do some color balance. I wanna give it slightly a bit more red-orange kind of floor, like that. 
and let's also make some areas darker. So I'm also going to do some curves on this floor. And let's see. Let's make the brush a bit bigger here. Sometimes you accidentally press caps lock on your keyboard and you don't see the brush. So in case you don't see the circle of your brush, you accidentally pressed caps lock. All right, so this is the floor. This can be lighter there and it's darker. All right, I think this is fine. And I want to correct the shadows a bit because you can clearly see I don't have enough shadows here. So I need to create more shadows, especially for the hyena. Now let's do 2020 now, and I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just gonna brush these shadows again, but this time I'm gonna make them darker. So we have our base shadow first, and now we can correct things. So usually you start off with the basic idea, basic shadows, and once you start adding images, you can start correcting stuff to make it look better. And this is actually pretty, pretty fun part of the job. I like doing corrections. It really changes the image to something what looks real for a final product, if you can call it that way. Let's also do the same for the line here, creating a new layer and just adding a bit more shadows. Also a bit there. there. Now this bow here needs to be a bit darker. I think this area is too light. Let's see, this is our... I'm getting confused with all these layers. Now I have to enable disable to see which one I'm brushing. So these piles here of the, of the line needs to be a bit darker. So I'm gonna create a new layer and it's inside this line. And I'm gonna take this color here from the pile and change this to multiply and brush this a bit darker. So we have bit more darker area there and also this part where it's touching the ground. You can increase the brush here a bit. 40, maybe 40 is too much. Let's see. I think it's fine. And there. And all these little corrections will definitely make your image look better at the end, especially when you're gonna do final rendering or how do you call it, final adjustments. I think this is fine. Now let's do the same for the hyena. And maybe a bit darker here, there. This is too light, like that. All right, so now the next thing, let's see, we need to add a background before we start blending this better together. Before I start editing a background in this image, I wanna extend this ground a bit more to the background. So let me delete this layer mask for now and rasterize this layer and simply just oh, select the area that I want to extend. So like this. And if I go to edit content aware fail, I can just select the area that it needs to copy, just the whole ground, press okay. And it's gonna extend this whole area to the back. Now, of course, we need to make sure that the adjustment layers here are also applying to both of these. So let me drag this out of them. Rasterize this together with Control E and then bring it back and then just click all these buttons again to have it like this. Okay, so we have this background now and now I can flatten this a bit more to get some more depth in this whole thing. And let's just give it a gradient like that in the background. I think this is a bit better. So we have some more space behind them. I feel like the gradient was too close to the front now. So let's leave it like this. And now I can start with the background. I'm going to start with adding a bit of mist in this composite. So the mist will be in the background here. So let me create a new layer and let's see the, what is this? This is our background. Let's put this all in the folder background. This is actually the floor, not the background floor or ground. And the mist will be between the images and the floor like that. All right, so for the color, it's gonna be something a bit gray brownish like this, I think. Let's increase the flow here and opacity. And for mist, I have these mist brushes here. You can use any mist brush that you want. You can get a lot of mist brushes 
on the internet if you search for free Photoshop mist brushes you can find a lot of these brushes so let's see how this looks and you can see already it looks a lot more interesting when you have like details in your image like mist some highlights you can also place a bit more mist in the front so in front of them so I'm gonna create a new layer this will be on top of the layers but this time I'm gonna make it a bit darker like that just some mist around them to make it a bit more mysterious let's see let's change the color of this mist to a bit more brownish and let's try another mist just like that and we have some mist now in this image I think this is already enough let's do a bit of this brown there also and let's see just some different types of mist I think this is fine I don't want to have it too much I want to have slightly mist all right so now we can add some real background in this for the background I have this image from this cave here I think I really like this part here that we have all these rocks here in the same kind of color tones like our image so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use that part and the other part I'm gonna brush away so let's first place it somewhere like this and just make a mask and brush the parts away that you don't need now for instance this will be the entrance of the cave maybe and this is our background so we need to make this dark or like something really dark brownish just like that and you can see we already have a really cool background now now probably maybe let's see if i make this smaller how this will look i'll have it a bit more in the background so something like this is fine and you can see here where the floor ends so make sure you don't have these mistakes in your composite so we need to fix this a bit i'm gonna brush a bit here on the floor to bring back this floor like that all right we have a nice background now and the lighting that we have here we probably won't even need any more maybe somewhere there stretch it out if you want to just a bit from the side and i'm gonna change the color of this lighting but if i press ctrl u i can change the color here with your situation maybe a bit more like orange yellowish lighting like that let's see this is too dark so i need to increase the lightness again just like that and let's rotate this a bit let's see just some lighting coming from there maybe this part of the cave can be removed so usually at this stage i'm just trying out different things i just brush things and then i put them back i remove them and Maybe this is even better if you only have one side of this cave. And for the other side, let's try something else. Maybe a bit. Oh, not that one. Maybe only this. So I'm going to try something for the other side. Okay, so right now I'm going to do some corrections to this. For instance, this light here, it's way too light now. So I'm going to drop the opacity here, for instance. Same goes for the hyena. This is a bit too much drop it a bit and let's see these mist mist things in the background Let, let's put this in a folder it's also a bit too much now i would maybe even let's make it one layer and change the color of this mist a bit to somewhere a bit more orangey like that i think this looks better a bit less visible i think it was too much and let's see and some more lighting changes i'm gonna play with all these settings now now i'm blending everything better together i'm just using a normal brush here with a hardness at zero opacity of flow 20 and a bit of a gray grayish brush to just brush these areas some dust and this way the whole image kind of blends better together instead of having too much contrast you can see the difference here it's created some mist around this whole area now the background is a bit dark there maybe we can also brush a bit there or let's leave it a bit dark there 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 just using my imagination a bit where there will be some mist to this image maybe also the bottom part here should be a bit darker for instance this ground 
also maybe in the background. So let's create a new layer and let's fill this with 50% gray. Create a clipping mask. Actually with all these corrections and stuff like that, you can go on for hours and hours. So I'm not gonna record everything I do here because it's just gonna take way too long for this video. And so a bit dark there, a bit dark here. I think this made it a bit better. See the difference? A bit darker. All right, so the next thing to do is to do some final adjustments. Let's bring the lighting a bit more here. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Press Ctrl U, a bit more whitish and a bit smaller. So I have to do some final adjustments here for the lighting and the colors and stuff like that. So let's try to add a gradient to this image. And for the gradient, I'm gonna put it in reverse, reverse and radial. And let's make the outer part like really dark gray, brownish. Just duplicate the settings by clicking on it, dragging it there and put it to the side. And now we can some, have some nice dark areas around it. Oh, and let's see, just a bit darker on the outer part. So we have all the focus on the center here. Press OK. You can also just take this one and move it around if you want to. Sometimes that's nice. But for this one, I would leave it in the center. Let's put this to soft light and drop the opacity a bit. So all these little changes I'm gonna do now, and after that it's pretty much done, just final adjustments. Okay, so this is how it looks now. I did some corrections. I brushed the shadows a bit better, made them a bit darker on these sides here at the corners. I added some particles, some dust here, just the image of dust, uh, not an image of brush, sorry. And the background I blurred out. And I also made sure that the background here, the ground is sharp here. And while it goes to the back, it has this blur going there. And also some darker parts. I made the, these parts here and here a bit darker. So it looks a bit better. Like we have coming lighting from there and it's like hitting the center here from some sort of, maybe a crack in the cave or something. And these areas here are also a bit brushed. So this area here in the center is lighter. So yeah, that is pretty much it. And now you can see I imported this into Lightroom. So in Lightroom, I usually apply my presets and I'll show you how they will change. So you can see here, this is the first one changes to this. This obviously is too much, so need to adjust it. But this is the second one, also pretty cool. And this one I like also for this one. This one is also nice. And you can see you can change, really change the mood of your whole image with these presets. So this is really good for doing the final adjustment. So I'm going to use this one, I like this one, but obviously it's too much. So I'm just gonna export this as an image. That's it. And let me go back. I think which wasn't this one. I think I like this one or this one. Let's do three. And this one, this one is also nice. And the only thing I have to do is just export these images to different files. And then I open them up in Photoshop again and I just place them on top of the original image. So this is what I'm going to do now. I am back into Photoshop again and now I have opened up these two images that I created in Lightroom. This one, I'm just going to copy it and put it above this. And also this one. Not sure about this one, maybe this one is a bit too much, but let's close these. And first of all, what I'm going to do is place them above this image and just play with opacity and that's pretty much it. You can see here, if I do this, this is way too much. I just like to use them a little bit like this. It gives something extra. If you compare this, it gives something extra to the whole design. And this one I like more. Let me play with the settings here. When I have too much, just a bit. Sometimes I go for 80, sometimes I go for less, maybe 10, something like this. And let's put this in a folder and see the difference before and after. We got a bit more focus on the center. Now, let's put this above everything and now I can do the final adjustment. So I created a layer of all the layers here and, and I'm gonna go into camera and here I do all the final things. 
So let's see. Let's go to basic here. Let's play around with the settings. Maybe a bit more contrast. Let's see the highlights. We'll drop the highlights a bit here. Like that, maybe a bit less. Let's see the shadows. I think the shadows like that. And let's play with these whites. These are really important in this image. Because if we increase this, we can see the details better. But I still want to have a, like a real cave kind of setting. So it's really tricky sometimes to get the exact thing you want. If I'm going to drop the texture, it's going to look like a cartoon. I don't want to have it like a cartoon. I want to have it like a real image. So I'm just going to slightly do this. Maybe a bit less of this. And let's see, dehaze. Don't need dehaze. Now let's move on to curves. Here I can do some lighting changes again. It's pretty cool. We get these highlights. Of course, it's too much. Some lights, maybe a bit more lights. A bit less. And the darker tones here, I'm going to leave those. Maybe this slightly up. All right, so sharpening. Do we need sharpening? Let's see. This image looks pretty sharp. Maybe a bit. Let's not do noise reduction or else the, I added some particles here and they're going to get lost. All right, let's play with the colors here. Don't have much color. It's pretty much all like orange, yellowish. If we can get some cooler color tones here. Let's see. Let's go to saturation. This is kind of a dark setting, so you might not want to use too many colors, especially not bright colors. So let's drop it a bit. All right, let's move on here. This one I don't really touch something yet. And some, this one, maybe a bit. All right, and here, the final color adjustments. Sometimes you're wondering, am I ruining the image or not? Or is it getting better? Because sometimes you think you need to do a lot of these changes, but most of the time you don't have to do much changes if you did the design right in Photoshop itself. So I think this is fine. Let me press OK and compare this before and after. We got a bit more highlights in the center. I think I like this. Let's see. Before, after. Yeah, it's better. Now, let's also do some curves to make it a bit lighter. And this one slightly. Let's try out the colored curves. Maybe a bit like that, and the green one. We can really set the color tones here with these curves. Let's keep it at one. And some blue. Like that, and some color balance also just to do the usual stuff when you create something you want to finish it off with these color adjustments. Let's see. And maybe some, let's try a color lookup. Three strips, what I usually like to try to see how it looks. Obviously this is too much, so maybe just a lot of it like that. Maybe even less. So yeah, I think this is pretty much it. I think I'm happy with this result. So I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a comment. And I hope to see you on the next one.